Hello, my name is Mary Toulon. I'm a scapegoat child recovery specialist. In this video, we are looking at proof that your parents know they're abusing you. So a couple of days ago, I had a sticker on my Instagram stories and I asked my community over there on Instagram to send me examples of when the parents had specifically told them that I know I'm abusing you. So whatever format that took. I did get quite a few answers and we had quite an interesting conversation over there on Instagram and I thought it would be worth doing a video about it. Sometimes there's this idea floating out there that the parents who are hurting their child, who are inflicting pain on their child and who are psychologically manipulating them and psychologically torturing them that they have no awareness about what they're doing that it's some unconscious behavior so this is or can be a bit of a myth that's floating around out there so if you're confused about the intention of your parents when they were inflicting pain on you all through your childhood and adulthood, then this video might shed some light on it. But I just wanted to open up a conversation around it. Um, personally, I find it very difficult to step into the shoes of an adult who would continuously manipulate and abuse their own child. It's not a headspace I'm familiar with. I just find it very difficult to contemplate what that would be like. And for many people that I work with, they also have the same difficulty. And especially when we're navigating a recovery from the role of the family scapegoat, we can think about the situation through our brain and our brain works very very differently from how an abuser's brain works so in terms of their intentions or that there might be a solution available because they couldn't possibly do what they're doing. It's the whole thing of it's so mind boggling, it's so incomprehensible and added to that all the years of smoke and mirrors that we were exposed to and gaslighting and brainwashing, it's a tricky one. So I pulled together I think around 15 or 16 of the direct messages that I got from people in my community and I wanted to share them with you to again just shed some light and let you know that other people who are in the role of the family scapegoat or who are recovered or recovering from the role of the family scapegoat have experience of their parents telling them directly, I know I'm abusing you. And what I have done with this list before I share it with you, I have categorized it into four categories. And those four categories are, their, number one is they're aware of the impact their abuse has on you. So in other words, they're inflicting pain and this is a human being saying, I am hurting this child, my own child that I brought into the world and I am fully, fully aware of that. Category number two is that they know their behavior is unacceptable. 
they know their behavior is not right. That's why they hide it from society. The third category, this one is just stomach churning, is that they enjoy inflicting pain. And the fourth category is a distinct lack of personal responsibility. So I'll go through these again and I'll share the examples that I have that I've categorized into each category. So the first category, they're aware of the impact their abuse has on you. And I've got four, in, four examples that people have shared. Number one is I intend to hurt you, the dad, that's what somebody said, like the dad said, I intend to hurt you. Um, second example here is you have accomplished so much and are strong in spite of my damaging actions. And I think that one was um, an email or it was a written format that this person had got. So that is word for word. You have accomplished so much and are so strong in spite of my damaging actions. So that person, that parent who said that to their child is plain as day in spite of my damaging actions is what they said. Uh, number three is become independent and get free from my oppression. So the parent, fully aware, fully conscious that they are oppressing their child. And the last example here is my, my mother said, of course I did, ha ha ha, so what? So just gives you another insight into the mentality of these people. So I'll move on to the second category. They know their behavior is unacceptable. So examples that my community have shared with me that their parents know their behavior is unacceptable. And the first one is when, when they said, you don't tell anyone what happens in this house. So, you've got secrecy there. So there's some secrets. So they know if society knew what was going on inside that house, there would be repercussions. There would be repercussions about that. The second example I have here is, my mom told me without much feeling, I know me and your sister treated you like an animal. So again, this is like, this is like we are getting um, like an insight into behind the scenes of that family house. So where that family are living, this is the stuff that they say and that they don't care that they're saying it to the family scapegoat. They don't give a monkeys, they're gonna say it. And it's this element, which I'll talk about in a minute when I go through the other examples, is we know we can get away with it. We know we can get away with it. Um, I'll go on to category number three, scrolling up here. They enjoy inflicting pain. So the examples people have shared with this one is, my husband said he could see the pleasure in my mom's face when I was crying. They get pleasure out of inflicting pain. So a person, a parent who gets pleasure out of really inflicting a lot of pain on their child. What sort of person, what sort of human is that um, it's a dangerous human. A uh, second one here is, remember the last time you resisted me like this, brackets with a smirk. And a third person said, honestly, the smirk and sick grin when they were inflicting harm and abuse. So, they know, they enjoy, they enjoy it, they get pleasure. It's negative excitement is the term. And this category is one I can relate to. That's why my stomach is churning at the moment. 
Um, it's that baiting and from my experience, I'll share a quick example, is that I endured what I call conversations of insanity when the parent is baiting me um, and it was uh, the topic that it was around was like food this is when I was an adult and like controlling around food and kept goading you know I haven't seen you eat and I was in that conversation like I <laughs> it's very um weird for me to reflect back on it that I was actually sitting there at the kitchen table engaging in this conversation of insanity where the parent was saying I haven't seen you eat so that means that you're hungry so you need to eat and let me give you some food here to eat and no matter how many times I told the person that I wasn't hungry, um, that did not go down very well and it just was a hamster wheel. Conversation of insanity, even though I was an adult. So I'll go on to the final category, which is a distinct lack of personal responsibility. So adults who, you know, it's, it's not nothing to do with me. So let me read out the examples. Um, I was raised this way, so deal with it. Number two, I know I do these things, but I can't help it. Number three, I know what I did is wrong, but you made me do it. Number four, I am your father, so I have a right to behave in this way, even though it's hurting you. The next one is, I. oh, the next one is this person said on my Instagram stories, they said, I didn't think they did, as in, I didn't think they were aware of this until reading the replies. And then the person said, my mom would say, that's just how I am. So this also tells us um, the kind of fallacy of trying to have an honest conversation with them. They're just gonna deflect and just make up an excuse oh, you know, I know I'm hurting you, but I can't help it. And the last two examples here is my male parent told me, your mother is mentally ill, you need to forgive her. So that one is like, you're, she's acting in abusive ways to you, but I'm going to make this your problem, like your response. It, the, the fact that it's hurting you is a problem. So you just need to do something about that. So again, just feigning responsibility for a person's actions as a grown adult. Um, and the last example here is she said, I keep wondering when I'll become a better person just before I went no contact. So that one, again, another great example of being an adult in this world, but you're saying that I'm not responsible for my actions. There's nothing I can do. I'm just gonna throw my hands in the air here. Um, I'm conscious that I'm doing it. I'm aware that I'm hurting you, I'm aware that this isn't right, I'm aware that we need to hide this, we need to hide this from society, but pff, nothing I can do about it. You know, you just need to deal with it, you need to learn how to forgive and all of that jam. So what can we conclude from this? That these people, they, they just operate in a different way than we do. We can conclude that they, they don't have a moral compass. They definitely don't have empathy. A parent who can hurt their child during the day and sleep well at night and continue to do that for 20 years um, is a dangerous, toxic person. Um, it's like their humanity has been 
knocked out of them and there isn't any logic or reasoning. So yeah, the big um, challenge for us is there's that, that lack of accountability um, and they just get away with it in society and um, ju yeah, all, all of that. And so what, what, can we, what can we do when we know this information? What we can do is place our energy and focus on us. So we're going to focus on our own healing. And of course, knowledge is power. So what we don't want to do is be banging our head against a brick wall, trying to get things to change or thinking we're responsible for fixing the situation in the family of origin, um, we can just focus on our own healing. That is the, the best thing that we can do. And I know it's very, very confusing. It's very, very complex. All the dynamics in the family unit, how things can switch around, roles can switch around. The person who is the family member who bullies you one day can be very nice to you the next day. That's very disorientating and the role of the bully can switch between different family members. Um, so the other thing we can do is work on healing from the trauma bonds, the trauma bonds that keep us stuck with those dynamics. And again, a sense of some type of responsibility or feeling sorry for them, feeling pity for them, feeling toxic compassion for them, we do need to put on our own oxygen mask. Um, so yeah, we are just, just to realize that we are on a different trajectory to them. They're very different people, I would suggest. <laughs> I think we can conclude that. Um, the BS that goes on in the dysfunctional family, it doesn't, it doesn't wash with us. Like we, we don't want that. What it boils down to is a difference in values. What we value is authenticity, honesty, connection, communication, and healthy relationships. What they value is quite the opposite very, very, very much the opposite. They value dishonesty. They value chaos. They value drama. They value negative excitement. They value inflicting harm because they're choosing to do it. They're conscious about it. They're aware of it. And that's what they do every day, they've no intention of changing. So they value covering up child abuse. That's what they're about. They value secrecy um, and they value, value inflicting pain. So I hope that has been a little bit insightful when we're in the role um, when we're in recovery from the role of the family scapegoat, we're unpacking all the very, very complex layers. So I do hope that has maybe unpacked another layer for you and maybe put another piece of the puzzle um, together for you and also perhaps in some instances, some parents who are continuing to inflict pain on their child do not have awareness about it. Um, who knows? Who knows? Um, I don't have all the answers about that. I don't know what it's like to be in their head. Um, but I just thought I would present this um, information to you today so you can understand that this part does take place. Thanks for watching video today and thank you. Take care.